Hello and welcome to episode 12 of Cold Case Christmas. This is the halfway point of this series. Another 12 episodes takes us all the way up to and including December 24th. In this case, we're turning to Oklahoma. The month is October, the year is 2009. The Jameson family left the home to go and view a 40 acre plot of land near Red Oak, Oklahoma that they were considering buying and they mysteriously disappeared. Their skeletonized remains weren't discovered for four years and after a lengthy investigation, the police still have no idea what happened to this family. There are several theories, but no certainties whatsoever. Let's tell their story. So on October 8th, 2009, Bobby Jameson, who was 44 at the time, his wife Cheryl Lynn was 40 and they had a six year old called Madison. They took their dog Maisie along as well. They loaded up their pickup truck and they headed into the Oklahoma mountains and were never seen alive again. Were they murdered? Did they get lost in the woods and succumb to the elements? Was it suicide of a whole family? It's one of America's most bizarre disappearance and eventual discovery, but there is absolutely no answers. The family were only traveling 30 miles to this area in Red Rock in the Oklahoma mountains because Bobby and Cheryl Lynn were thinking about buying a 40 acre plot of land. They planned to live in a storage shed that they already owned on the land and then they were going to make that land their own. Bobby and Cheryl Lynn had already visited an associate of the landowner and when that meeting was done the family parked up and it's believed that they went for a small walk. Only around 15 minutes maybe to stretch the legs, let Maisie have a run, they took their GPS unit, they returned to their vehicle, they drove a little further, and then, bizarrely, the truck was left locked, but in the middle of a dirt track. But Maisie, the dog, was left inside. The family had obviously got plans for this land, but the family wasn't without its tragedies. In 2003, Bobby had suffered a car accident which left him with chronic back pain. Cheryl Lynn suffered from bipolar disorder. She was on medication, but her condition was poorly controlled and she often experienced bouts of severe depression. The marriage was, by all accounts, in a bad way. Maybe they wanted to buy this land for a new start. Nobody really knows. But there were some concerning aspects of this case that did come to light. One of which was, allegedly, Bobby and Cheryl Lynn had spoken to a local pastor at their current home about their belief that their home had been invaded by dark spirits and these spirits needed to be exorcised. This was because Madison had started talking to an imaginary friend named Emily and Cheryl Lynn believed that Emily was actually a spirit. Little kids often have imaginary friends. But Cheryl Lynn took this as a sign that something really dark and really bad had invaded their home. At one point, Bobby asked the pastor whether he could purchase special bullets to shoot the spirits. Bobby had also bought a copy of the Satanic Bible, which he thought would help him in getting rid of these evil spirits. Cheryl Lynn often conducted seances with her friends. Now, that's not unusual. People do this. But Cheryl Lynn took it really seriously. This all could have been a product of her bipolar disorder if she was having perhaps psychotic episodes. Bipolar has a really severe side to it. Bipolar 1. If her condition wasn't controlled by the medication, then I just wonder whether that's what she was suffering from. But you see, the trouble is, family and friends had played into this belief of theirs that their house was haunted. They claimed that they'd actually experienced some odd things in the house. One friend called Nikki said that she felt a horrible presence in the house. And just being there left her feeling down 
and depressed, which I think is probably another reason why Sherilyn thought she was depressed because this haunted house was making her so. Now, Sherilyn had a son from a previous marriage. And in July 2009, so just a handful of months before their disappearance, Sherilyn's ex-husband from her first marriage took custody of their son, Colton. Shortly before their disappearance in September, Sherilyn had been hospitalised following a failed suicide attempt. During the custody hearing, 12-year-old Colton said that he would prefer to live with his dad. He gave a statement about his mother claiming that she seemed very depressed and often acted strangely. You can understand why one theory into the Jameson's disappearance was one of suicide. But the Jamesons, as I said, went to look at this land. They left their truck on a dirt road with Maisie inside and they were gone. A few days later, Saturday, October 17th, 2009, hunters came across the Jamesons' abandoned truck just northwest of Red Oak. The initial belief that this truck had just been stolen and dumped with a dog inside, it soon changed to something far more serious. And the Latimer County Sheriff launched a huge search operation. They used over 400 volunteers, some on horses, mules, ATVs, teams of cadaver dogs, 16 teams, apparently, of cadaver dogs went out. They used drones, but they found nothing. During the searches, cadaver dog teams repeatedly found scent near a nearby water tower. This was drained, it was searched, but there was no evidence of human remains. So why had multiple cadaver dogs alerted there? We don't know. Had their remains been there at one point? Had they been murdered and then moved? A search of the truck revealed that Bobby and Sherilyn had left their cell phones behind. $32,000 in cash. $32,000 just left in a truck. So they'd left that much money. They hadn't planned to run away, had they? They hadn't just walked off into the mountains planning to run away. It seems to me that they were either planning to return or they weren't. It was just one final walk. Maps, GPS, Sherilyn's purse, wallets, everything was in that truck including Maisie, who was malnourished, very thirsty, but Maisie survived, so that's good. The question was, where had the Jamesons got $32,000 in cash? How were they affording to buy a 40-acre plot of land? Bobby wasn't working because of his disability, his back injury. Sherilyn wasn't working because of her uncontrolled bipolar disorder. They were living on disability benefits. Was this money that they'd acquired by nefarious means, drug dealing perhaps? And that was one theory that arose. Had they been in some kind of trouble with drug dealers? Had they stepped on people's toes in that world? And had they been taken out? Also in the truck, a really worrying thing was found. And this was an 11-page hate letter from Sherilyn to Bobby. In that letter, she said that Bobby didn't care about his daughter, Madison. She listed all the things she hated about Bobby. She said in the letter she wanted a divorce. So why was she planning to buy a 40-acre plot of land and start a new life? Were they going to go and start a new life or was, was there some other reason? To be there. I mean, they did meet with an associate of the landowners, so they did actually make some attempt to buy the land. It wasn't just that they told family and friends that that's what they were doing and they were in the area for another reason. But the truck was left undamaged. There was no sign of an accident, no sign of a struggle. So despite this extensive searching, no sign of the Jamesons was found. That is until November 16th, 2013. And just 2.7 miles from where the truck was located, hunters found the skeletal remains of two adults and one child. How these have been missed in the initial searches, no one knows. 
Maybe the bodies have been moved there after the searches had completed, or maybe they were just missed. But they were in the smokestack hollow area, and this area is extremely remote. The three bodies, understandably, they'd been there all that time, were severely decomposed. There was just three skulls, a number of bones and bone fragments. It wasn't even complete skeletons. There were scraps of clothing and the shoes, and that was it. Forensic testing confirmed that the remains were Bobby, Sherilyn, and Madison Jameson. But how did they die is a massive question. Due to the extensive decomposition of the bodies and the incomplete skeletons, it was impossible to determine a cause, a manner of death. One of the skulls, that of Bobby, had a small hole that was initially suspected to be a bullet wound, but they weren't sure. So had Bobby been shot or was this hole due to something else? We don't know. So with no cause or manner of death, all we're left with is theory. All the investigations looking into leads, all of them came to dead ends. The sheriff said a lot of investigators would love to have as many leads as we do. The problem is they point in so many different directions. And the problem of that was every direction they went in resulted in a dead end. Police had surveillance footage from outside the Jameson's home with a video showing Bobby and Sherilyn walking backwards and forwards 20 times from their house to their truck, loading items in what appeared to be a zombie-like trance. Sometimes, though, they weren't carrying anything. They were just walking backwards and forwards and sometimes just stopped, just stopped for ages. So were they on drugs? The odd behaviour in this video suggests that they were on drugs, but with severe depression on Sherilyn's part, was that a reason? But what was Bobby doing? Was Bobby on drugs? We just don't know. So there's been several theories. Let's just go through a handful of them. Did they go for a walk innocently? Just a quick hike in the woods before they headed home. They just got lost and died of hypothermia. Unlikely because of one important detail. Not that the bodies were missed, on that initial search. Remember, they were only 2.7 miles away. It's possible that they could have been missed, but this is bizarre, that they were lined up. If they'd have succumbed to the elements, wouldn't they have been found almost like huddled together? But they were lined up side by side, each with their faces down. Now, to all die like that of hypothermia or starvation, that's incredibly unlikely. That's like an execution style of death. But there was only Bobby who had that hole in his skull. It wasn't even positive 100% that this was a bullet wound. And they thought that the Jameson's truck was parked in a way just in the middle of a dirt track. It was like they'd been stopped by somebody, made to get out. Maybe if they'd been forced out, wouldn't somebody have searched you know, if it was a, a robbery gone wrong, they'd have surely found the $32,000 that was stashed under the driver's seat. At the very least, they would have taken their cell phones. So was this a murder-suicide? Cheryl Lynn did own a gun, a 22 caliber pistol that she did carry with her when she went out. And that small hole in Bobby's skull could have been from a bullet, again, not sure. But neither Cheryl Lynn nor Madison had gunshot evidence. So you would think if this was a murder-suicide and Sherilyn had shot Bobby, that she would have also shot Madison and then she would have shot herself. And the gun has never been found. If this was a murder-suicide, the gun would be at the scene, wouldn't it? So all roads lead to the fact that the Jamesons were murdered. But by who is, frankly, anyone's guess. The Jamesons have been accused in the death of being part of a satanic cult, which isn't so wild in this instance because of this fear of dark spirits and the fact that Bobby had bought a satanic Bible. That is not such a wild thought that they were part of some kind of cult and this was a cult ritual. Or was it a drug deal gone wrong? The area of Oklahoma where the Jameson family lived was well known for its drug activity. There was meth labs, 
And Bobby didn't like meth and he'd recently reported somebody for the manufacture of meth. And this $32,000, where did that come from? They were on disability. We don't know. Could it have been a member of the family that followed them and killed them? The family had at one point filed a protective order against Bobby's dad. Bob Dean Jameson, because they claimed he'd threatened to kill them over some business dealings. But had he though, or was this just another paranoid ramble of theirs? But it was known that Bob did have a running feud with his son. So maybe there was truth in it. It's alleged that Bob had connections with the Mexican mafia. <laughs> Again, it sounds wild that the Mexican Mafia would be chasing down Bobby Sherilyn and a little girl in the Oklahoma mountains, but anything's possible. There's various other theories, such as that they were kidnapped by paedophiles so that they could get to Madison. But we don't know whether Madison suffered any sexual abuse because skeletonized remains can't give up those kind of secrets. We just don't know. As I said, this is one of the most bizarre disappearances and death discoveries in American history. And this is the story of the Jamesons. All the leads, all the searches, everything just leads to dead ends again and again. But let me know what you think happened to the Jamesons. And I'll see you very soon in the next episode of Cold Case Christmas. Bye, guys. Come on, he's gone. Come on, he's gone. Come on. Tilly. Come on, you're not playing for time. He's gone. You're going to get the real season while I'm still you. Come on. Come on. Thank you. Tilly. Come on. Come on. This way. Good girl. Good girl.